Hello, divine beings. It's Eldora Rose on this glorious day in November 2019. How's everyone doing? For those of you who are new to my channel, I am experiencing a rapid awakening and part of my awakening process is also aligning to my soul's highest timeline, which is making these videos, blogging about the ascension process, as well as helping anchor 5D consciousness, um, completely synchronized with the mass awakening happening on this planet. It gives me great joy to be doing this work. It gives me great joy to be on this path. And I welcome you all to my YouTube family. November 11th, so the 11-11 portal was a big one, intense energies. There was a lot going on, ears ringing, legs shaking. I remember that day I had to hold on to things because there was so much energy passing through me. It was quite intense, but just a reminder that a lot is going on behind the scenes. And whether or not your conscious mind is aware, our light bodies are being repaired, our mark markabas are being repaired and activated. There is so much work going on because humanity as a collective is being prepared, is being prepared for the grand finale party, for the grand party of the golden age. So dear one, I wanna start this message off, this energetic update off by saying you are doing so well and to go easy on yourself, to go easy on yourself and to remind yourself that you are here by divine decree, you're here by divine order. And the work you're doing is affecting the collective, not just you, not just your friends, but every shift that you make within yourself is helping so many. So one of the first um, tools that the angels have given me, the downloads have been intense. They have been crazy. I've asked um, the, the angels, I said, why are the downloads coming in even in my sleep? And that is because it is time, my dear friends, it is time for us to wake up. It is time for us to step in our power and it is time for us to align to our soul's path. The time of um, waiting or um, playing small, that's a big one, is done. The time for playing small is behind us. It is no longer a part of the new world. The golden age requires every single one of us to step it up. And so one of the first tools that the angels have provided us with as a huge reminder for all of humanity is to remember that so much is going on in the background and the tool that they've given me is to bring down the central sun so ev throughout your day throughout your day when you're driving when you're stuck in traffic when you're in the shower when you're at home watching i don't know like when you're on social media whatever you're doing so imagine the central sun as just being above your head so bring down the central sun through your imagination and pull down this golden healing light and do that constantly Every time you're feeling uncentered, your chakras are feeling blocked or clogged, constantly bring the central sun just above your head, feel its warmth and pull down energy and take it down to the base of your feet and then circle it back up through the front and let it out. So pull down this light from the central sun, circle it through your body, let it come rise up from the front of your body and let it go out. Do this as often as you can. It will not only give you immense comfort and energy and clarity and centeredness, it'll take away your anxiety. It is actually one of the, my favorite tools now and every time I forget to do it, they remind me by giving me a small sensation of discomfort in my chakras. So when I feel that, I know, okay, it's time to do the central sun exercise again. One of the messages that the angels have for us this time around is a reminder to not box spirituality, to not box our awakening process and everything we're learning this far into another version of religion. And a reminder that that is what we are moving away from. So in spirituality, uh, I'm finding these days that even as we walk our path from awakening to ascension, even though we're on our journey of self-development and self inspection and retrospection there is still a lot of division division of whether you're me vegan or you eat meat 
division of whether you smoke weed or not, or you don't smoke weed. Um, what else? Alcohol or your no alcohol. There's so much judgment. There's so many divisions. And the message from the angelic realm is very clear on this. Every one of us is unique in our own beautiful way. What may work for you may not work for someone else. So letting go of the judgment is actually a part of our journey. If we judge, we're holding ourselves back. If we are soon to judge, let's say, um, our friends who are standing in their power, or let's say we are judging people um, just based on the fact that they eat meat and thinking about how horrendous that is and how slaughter of animal is not okay. All of that is great. These are our perspectives, but it's important to not get into the vibration of judgment because that'll hold you back. And the angels are reminding us that that is what religion did. It constantly created separation. It constantly created judgments and the Shias and the Sunnis, the Protestants and the Catholics, the Aga Khanis and the Sufis. Like there's so much judgment within humanity and we're rising above all of that. If you see someone drinking alcohol, if you see someone smoking weed, it is okay to educate them on what you think is right. Like me personally, I feel like I have my set of um, principles that I follow based on what's good for my body. Like alcohol doesn't do well with me. For some reason, when I drink alcohol, when I consume alcohol, I'm very um, clouded. Like I'm very clouded. I don't get my downloads as uh, easily. I feel very clogged in my head. My neural pathways seem very blocked. It's important not to expect others to follow the same set of, set of rules. Each of us has the innate access to source energy. Each of us is a divine being and we know what's good for us. So it's time to start tapping into what's good for you and letting others be. One of the reminders um, coming in are also is also to go to um, sacred lands, to go to vortices like Mount Shasta, Lake Louise, Sedona, Egypt. Um, these are just the ones I'm aware of. There are quite, a, um, what's it called? Uh, Glastonbury in the UK is one, that, uh, one that's on my list. So going into these, because we have time coded a lot of stuff thousands of years ago in our previous incarnations. Atlantis Lemuria times, we've, we, many of us were kings and queens, many of us had superpowers and we've time coded a lot of stuff in that era and we've time coded it in a capsule that will activate in a future, in a future timeline, in a future lifetime. So many of us are going back to these vortices and experiencing intense activations, intense upgrades. I can say that for myself for sure. Um, my guides are actually giving um, me a message right now that they want you to know is uh, if you don't have access to go to these um, vortices, there's a cat here. She's in love with me. I give her food every day. We're in a cottage in Nashville. I give her food every morning and like right at 7 a.m. she's waiting meow meow in front of the door. Adorable. And now she says, why aren't you playing with me? <laughs> okay, sorry guys. I went off. Um, I went off for a bit. So my guides are saying to me now that if you don't have access to these, to go to, to travel, to go to these sites, don't worry about it because those of us who do bring back the energy to the big cities. So I'm one of them. My partner Siman is one of them. We have been, um, this is part of our soul's plan, our soul's mission to travel around the world and soak up the energy of the land. We also do a lot, a lot of land healing everywhere we go. We, uh, yesterday, Siman went up in the mountains and he anchored divine mother energy and uh, this divine mother, mother energy, we embedded it in the land here. It's now going to trickle into the land for eons to come. And so a lot of us light workers are being given these instructions. And when we do this and when we go back to our big cities, we take this energy with us. And this is part of the reason why my guide said to me this morning, I was actually planning to go back to Toronto and make this energetic update, this energy update. And they said, make it before you leave, make it in Asheville because the land, the fire, everything here, it contains an energetic transmission. 
So even though I'm speaking right now to you, my guide said you don't need, you can say anything you want. You can sing them a happy birthday song if you want because the activations are happening through the energy. So let's try that for a second actually. They're actually giving me a, an exercise to do right now, which might take about 30 seconds. So they're asking me to expand my heart and radiate energy towards the screen. So just receiving this, just you can either keep your eyes closed or open and receive this energetic transmission from the angels. How did that feel? Wow, for me it just felt like tingling in my heart and the opening of my heart chakra. Yeah, it felt beautiful. Thank you dear guides, thank you for that. Ah, uh, what else? Is there anything else that's wishing to come through? Yeah, there is. Um, a lot of us are standing in our divine sovereign power and it's triggering a few people around us. And this is happening to many light workers. So the message around this is to realize and recognize that as you expand your light, you are going to trigger other people's shit. And I'll give you an example. I actually made a Facebook post about this a few days ago. So uh, a very good friend of mine was supposed to meet me here in Asheville with her husband and um, I've known her for about five years, but ever since I have started standing in my power and expanding my light and speaking my truth on YouTube and just focusing on raising my vibration, I have been feeling a lot of energy um, building up in her, but this energy has not been spoken because we both share love for each other. And recently something happened and it triggered that wound. It triggered whatever it was and it went from A to Z so fast that she blocked me on Facebook and she said, I have spiritual ego. Now, if that happened to me five years ago, I would believe it. But now, because I've done so much work on who I, who, who, on who I am, I've done so much work on clearing my gunk and I have worked on my ego lessons. I'm always submitting my negative ego. I'm always saying I submit my ego. I'm just this, I'm a humble, I'm a humble, being, I'm a, I'm a humble God being that is here on a divine mission. So constantly surrendering your ego, but knowing the power that lies beneath you, you, knowing your divine power. So because I've done the work, I understand that I have compassion for the fact that she's being triggered by me standing in my power. And why is she being triggered? Not because she doesn't like me. She's being triggered because insecurity, her insecurities are creeping up. She loved the version of me that was small, that dimmed my light, that did not speak my truth. She loved that version of me. And the minute I started expanding, her insecurities about her stagnation came up, showed up. And it was so unbearable that she had to block me on Facebook. And this is how triggers work. This is how these things work. So, th so the guidance coming in right now is, to remember that you are on a divine mission and to not let the opinion of others um, stagnate your growth. It is now time to move from a very human version of love to an unconditional version of love. And unconditional love does not mean what many of you think it means. It does not mean tolerating um, toxicity or tolerating, tolerating guilt or uh, projection of shame or tolerating rudeness from anyone just in the name of unity. No, you're actually aiding the, the separation consciousness by continuing to be in that, in that zone. So right now it's of utmost importance to keep your energetic field, to keep your boundaries, to keep your life clean, clear of anyone that's draining you. And guys, by the universal law, your only job is to up level. Your job is to up level. Your job is not to go down and then 
take people up. Your job is to keep up leveling so that people can keep up leveling as well to catch up with you. If every one of us started down leveling to help others, can you imagine there would be so much stagnation on earth? So your job is to keep up leveling. And then those who have to follow will follow. <sighs> I'm glad that came through because that seems to be a big one for a lot of us who are standing in our power, in our divine wholeness, in our divine, uh, get, getting, a part, getting to our divine mission. And it is not spiritual ego. For those of you who have worked on your ego, you know what I'm talking about. It's not your ego. It is just we humans are so freaking used to playing small that all of a sudden when we start um, when we start standing in our divine sovereign power, it triggers the shit out of people. And just send them compassion and just know that your soul plan, your soul contract with them is done. It's done. If you constantly justify to the people you trigger, you're going to stay in that loop forever. Instead, cut loose from that loop. Do not engage in negativity. Do not send them hate or judgment or any of that stuff, not even anger. Just send them unconditional love by removing yourself and wishing them well on their journey. Now, as we prepare for 2020 energies, there's a lot of talk of the financial reset. I'm not a financial advisor, but I have enough guidance from my angels, from the guides to know that something big, big like we can't imagine is about to hit us, is about to bless us. It is all part of the plan. It is a part of the ascension process. It is a part of getting out systems that no longer work for humanity. It is about time this happened. So while I'm not a financial advisor, one of the things that I personally, it's just my perspective is just getting ready for whatever is to come, is to realize that maybe money is going to be obsolete. There is so much talk on this. There is so much guidance on this that I'm receiving. Money may be obsolete. So what I'm personally doing is I'm investing in land, I'm investing in gold, and I'm investing in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether. It's just to be, it's just to have my eggs in different baskets and not just rely on the currency of money alone. The World Bank, the IMF, it is, it is global news now that they are bankrupt. They are bankrupt and something big is happening. This is all part of this is all part of the angelic intervention that we are experiencing. So just preparing yourselves without fear. There is no need to fear because part of this new quantum financial system is also um, the reset of the distribution of wealth where every single person, every, all of humanity, there will be equal distribution of wealth. There will be no poverty. That is where we're going and it's happening sooner than you think. It is happening now, 2020 is what I'm being guided. My angels are constantly telling me, 2020, brace yourself. Early 2020. So equal distribution of wealth, we don't know how that's gonna happen. We don't know if there's gonna be a, a fund where we all go to a certain office and get our share. We don't know what's gonna happen, but just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself and connect to your own inner guidance. Connect and ask your guide, say, how do I prepare myself? And it is important not to fear this transition. This transition is happening for us. It is for our benefit so that everybody is guaranteed water, shelter, food, and the basic, basic necessities of life. This is all good stuff. And it's just important to um, educate ourselves and to do what's necessary to just basically use our own intuition to see what's going on. Why was cryptocurrency even introduced? If the banks are going, um, bankrupt it is all part of a bigger picture how can i how can i get a an asset that is that basically bypasses money the currency of money so just educate yourselves dear ones and um, tune into your own guidance it is now time for the higher self for our higher self to merge with us he or she is waiting to merge with you your higher self can only merge with you when there's enough space within your being for your higher self to come in, for her, your higher self to step in. And what that really means is simple. It's getting rid of all the excess BS that we are conditioned to think, to feel. 
the smoke is getting in my eyes now. It feels wonderful, but whew, dear wind, please move away from us and move to the other side. Thank you. Where was I? Um, where was I? Yes, the higher self merger. So higher self, my higher self uh, merged with me. A part of my higher self merged with me about, what was it, six months ago? It was a beautiful, it was some big, I remember it was uh, some kind of a portal. I don't remember which portal exactly. And it was beautiful. It was tied into my own self-love where I could give myself love, give myself so much acknowledgement and credit for everything that I've been through. And it was a process. And then at one point I actually felt different. I felt like a badass and I'm like, whoa, it's me, but it's a more, solid it's a more divine it's a more sure it's a more certain side of me it's a side of me that doesn't people please it's a side of me that doesn't care about what people think it's a side of me that's so sure of what she's doing so the angels are reminding everyone that every single one of you your higher selves are waiting to merge with you if that hasn't already happened and one of the tools in addition to clearing out your life of any toxicity, your higher self cannot merge with you if you have toxic emotions, if you have judgment towards yourself, if you live in fear, if you have guilt, if you project shame, your higher self cannot breathe or exist in those energies. So your higher self is waiting. Your higher self is waiting in a different dimension for you to just do the work so he or she can merge with you, dear one. And that is the most beautiful feeling of it all because it's suddenly, you just suddenly feel like you have a superpower working with you, for you. So the angels have given us a mantra for this. Throughout your day, they want you to say the mantra, I call in my higher self. I call in my Christed self. I call in Christ light. So, you can say it however you want. You don't have to follow the exact words. To be very simple, to simplify it, you can just say, I call in my Christed self. And two things happen out of this. One is more and more and more of your Christ light is brought down because this is a free will world. You have to ask for it to happen. You have to ask for it to be activated. So once this comes in, the angels are telling me, then instruct your angels to work on your light body to repair your light body so more of that golden christ light is coming in coming down into your being and they're using this light to reconstruct your light body they're using this light to reconstruct your markaba so constantly using this mantra throughout your day and setting intentions and saying i submit my ego i i submit my uh, will to divine will I submit my will to divine will. I call upon my higher self. I call in my Christ itself. So this mantra is something that you can do constantly throughout the day. It is a beautiful feeling and it actually raises your vibration. So it's easy to do, it raises your vibration and so much happens in the background when you do this, when you follow this. What else? I have some notes here. Um, so another reminder is that we are living in a 3d world we're living in a 3d world but we're moving into 5d consciousness so we're moving from 3d to 5d now not always do you experience 5d everywhere you go so the reminder coming in is to constantly remember that you are being asked to master 5d in certain 3D environments. So when you go to Tim Hortons, when you fly and you go to the airport, you go to pick up a car from a car rental, you go to a bank, not everyone is aware of 5D. Not everyone is aware of the 5D guidelines. So we're being reminded to master 5D in a 3D physical world is so important. Um, Something that I want to share along the same lines, a few weeks ago I went to an event. I don't usually go to a lot of events because I find that as I'm working on my journey, it's more and more important for me personally to just surround myself with just the purest, unconditionally loving souls where I can learn. Um, 
in the past I would all I would surround myself to with people that I, that I don't just didn't resonate and I felt drained and I, I just stopped going to events and that served me really well because I took a whole year to just focus in on my energy and anchor my higher self which was harder for me to do when I was going out constantly so to anchor my higher vibration I just stayed in my own cocoon if that makes sense and I know it makes sense for a lot of you but here's the here's what I want to share with you a few weeks ago I went to an event in Toronto I was guided to go and I wasn't sure why I was being guided to go the host was a really really warm person and warmth really touches my heart she's very hospitable very warm so I said okay I'm gonna go to this event I went to this event and it was a great event it was like a mastermind session there was a lot of people and I was exhausted and drained within two hours of this starting just after lunch like even before lunch I was exhausted and ready to go home and I wasn't sure why I'm like there's no one here that's rude there's no one here that's I don't know I, I just couldn't figure it out and that is when my guides when I left my angel said to me know your audience so what I was doing was I was going into this concept without knowing who was there without knowing I was just, I just assumed that everybody there spoke my language basically so I was talking about 5d principles not even like we were all sharing it was there was lots of sharing circles and every time I spoke about something there was one or two people that, that were extremely triggered they didn't say they were triggered but their energetic field was just out of whack and so my angel said you were constantly sharing with the wrong people not that they are bad people but they're just not ready to listen to what you have to say so what happened was their judgments they have they haven't yet gotten on the path where they have to master their judgments or master their energy they're not even on that path yet so knowing your audience and not sharing what you had to share from a 5d perspective it's like talking about the internet to someone who doesn't even know what a computer is right so they're saying know your audience if not you're going to it's almost like you're going to poke holes in your energetic field in your aura so I felt so attacked and I on my drive home I'm thinking what happened like I don't even know what happened there was nobody there that was rude and that's when the angels said they said you were being judged that you were triggering people especially this one person this one lady you were triggering her because everything that you were talking about was bringing up her deepest shit when you were talking about unlimited abundance, it was bringing up her shit because she lives in lack. And so constantly, you were her judgments were being thrown at you, thrown at you, thrown at you. And so it kept feeling like energetic darts stabbing you and stabbing you and stabbing you because you thought you were in a, in a good place, in a comfortable place, in a warm place. But know your audience. That's a big one, guys. That's a big one. So when you're sitting with your family, when you're sitting with your friends that might still... Um, be living under the 3d operating system let us remind ourselves not to be too preachy and say well this is wrong this is right because ultimately they're not they may not be ready to hear what you're saying and ultimately it's not even about that it's about protecting your energy it's protecting your aura and making sure that you don't feel exhausted and drained because there's so much here for you to do if you're exhausted and you're drained you are doing such a disservice to the ascension process because your work dear one is so important so keeping your energetic clean feel uh, your energetic field clean is more important than um, teaching others who are not ready to hear your message and this is a big one on the same note I would like to also add that a few months ago I was I received guidance to stop the loop to basically stop and exit the loop of trying to correct others so in the past I was very uh, I used to mirror people a lot I thought that was me doing service to them I used to always mirror to them saying hey that's not true that's not how it happened this is what it was and my guide said the more you do that the more of it you you are attracting to your life and that's draining it's exhausting so this is one um, one piece of guidance that has liberated me on so many levels which is actually what gives me the clarity to freaking come on YouTube and make these messages because I'm not concerned about the 1% that may not get me. I am making these messages for the people who get me, who can learn, who understand, and who are on this journey with me. 
So the message was this. So let's say you're on social media. Let's say you're on YouTube. Let's say you make a post about spirituality or whatever, whatever speaks to you. There's always going to be these few people that correct you. And let's say you're coming from a 5D operating system. You know exactly what you're saying. You've mastered your ego, but they haven't. So they're going to comment and they're going to basically try to make you look like shit. And you have two choices. I hear some, uh, I hear a cat. So you have two choices at that point. You have a choice of co correcting, like replying, commenting, correcting them and going down that loop. Or you can just choose to look at it and completely ignore it and not even attach to it. Now, this is a big one and I really want you guys to get it because it has freed me and I want to really anchor this in. Half the time you might say, oh, no, 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 that's not right. If he's saying something, I need to teach him. I need to teach her. I need to coach her. I need to tell her what's right. And that is what the trick is. That is what the illusion is. The more we go deeper and deeper and deeper into justifying ourselves, the universe says, okay, that's what you want to do. Sure. So more and more and more of this. Instead, if you say I have liberated myself from focusing on the 0.1% of people who don't get me, I'm just going to go and do my work. All of a sudden your universe is filled with a different set of energies. How else can I say this? It's also, it's also an energetic thing. Okay. I got it. So let's say, um, somebody messages you and says, I'm just making this up guys. My examples sometimes like <laughs> are a bit crude. Let's say somebody messages you and says, you're full of shit. You have spiritual ego, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now there's two ways to deal with it. One way is to reply saying, are you out of your mind? It is you who have the ego you're judging or you can completely stay away from all of that energy and you can say, I don't need to invest in this. I don't need to justify myself. Obviously this person has a lot of work to do, but I am done energetically going into this loop. So let me give you the example of what would happen if you actually re responded, right? Let's say you responded and, and said, are you kidding me? And whatever you have to say that would anger this person more. And then you would respond with anger. And for the next few days, you've opened this energetic vortex, this energetic portal of hate, of anger, of resentment, of blame. And your energy is shaken up for the next few days. All you're thinking about is this person. How could he say this? How could she say this? And then you've also opened up this portal of hate. So this other person is going to go and propagate more and more hate against you, more and more rumors against you. And what's going to happen to you then is you've just opened up this portal where even though you're like trying to live in this harmonious world, all these energetic darts are being thrown at you and you don't even know what what's happening. It's psychic attack. So you're exhausted, you're drained, you're depleted of energy. So you've just lost a whole week. Instead, if you just say, I'm done with this cycle, I don't even need to respond to this person. That does not make you a small person. So this is, this is so strong and I wanted to take some time going deeper into this because it is one of the biggest things that keep us in this loop of, loop of 3D and 4D. And I wanted to offer that to you. Also beautiful people, a reminder to slow down. How fast do we go? Seriously, we go at the speed of light. And I'm actually notorious. I used to be notorious for this. I owned a business in Calgary and I would hire people that could multitask. And I would tell people in their interview, well, you need to be doing three things at a time. That is the minimum. So like I had a, a company that sold uh, chips and ice cream. So I would say you can talk to customers at the same time, stamp the chips and at the same time, um, bag the chips. So it's possible. I, I work that way. I work like, a, like I work like ridiculous. That's why now I'm like, Oh my God, I just need my peace. So multitasking is old energy. And right now slowing down, this is actually what I wanted to start this video with, but it sounds so basic that a lot of us might think, Oh, slowing down. We all know that, but let us really absorb that guys. Even now we're think about how the angels, how the angels are in the angelic realm. I've actually seen the angelic realm. You know how they work? 
everybody, it, it's like an office. So imagine going into an office, like a library or some kind of an office where everybody has their roles and it's quiet. That's actually how it feels. So there's people um, with ledgers and books doing their work and they have shifts, so they finish their work and they're working in a multi-dimensional way. It's hard for me to explain. They're working in a multi-dimensional way, but it's so harmonious. It's so harmonious and it's so easy. It's so, no one's multitasking, there's no stress. So the angels are reminding us to bring that down to our reality and invest in more peace, whatever that is to you. Ah, grounding is, uh, man is I, I'm gonna say mandatory. For me, it's mandatory. If I don't ground, I crash. So grounding, I've, I'm going to be uploading another video. I've, I recorded it yesterday. It's about how to ground, um, how to ground and shield. And that's something I recommend you guys do every single day, once or twice a day, and really pay attention to when you're doing it. It's not just walking on the ground, like for people like us who live in Canada, that's not enough because we're not doing that enough. We really have to let our roots go in. So do look up my meditation on grounding and shielding. Highly recommend you do that every day. And I'm going to wrap this um, message up by wishing you so much love, sending you so much love, guys. Um, 2020 is going to be an incredibly exciting year. Um, oh, my God. Like, the kind of stuff we're being shown is ridiculous. It's actually so ridiculous that we're, we're changing history. 2020 is going to be a big year, and it's we still have some time to get rid of all these uh, behaviors that no longer serve us, that don't serve our highest good. So that's the intention of this video, to drop all things that no longer serve the highest good and really brace yourself for 2020. Sending you so much love from Asheville, North Carolina. Today is actually the day we check out. We have a few hours by the fire and then heading to the airport and heading back to Toronto. Love you guys.